should be live. All right, let me post you over here where you can actually see comments. And there we go. All right, we'll give this a couple seconds. All right, I just got a notification, so let me share that. We are live. So let's go to Paranormal Inc. And share. They can pick us up in Paranormal Inc., right? Correct. There you go. We got a couple people coming in now. Let's start this. Uh, uh. All right, we got some people coming in now. So let's hit the intro. everybody i am dave seiler this is my co-host hey it's ernie how you doing and uh welcome to the first live broadcast of step into the paranormal uh hosted on wlfe db radio uh got a lot of good things coming your way we have a special guest tonight um so we have a lot of cool surprises coming on we actually have some very interesting information um which is going to be very fun so i hope you enjoy the show and thank you for tuning in <coughs> so um ernie uh, I know that you had a couple things you wanted to mention right out of the gate, so I'll let you start. Yeah, tonight, um, what we're going to be discussing is everyone's favorite topic when it comes to the paranormal, the skeptic. Ooh. Yeah, what I do you think about that? I love skeptics. And just uh, so happens, we have the number one skeptic going to be joining us in a few minutes tonight. I think we all know who that is. Oh, sorry. I'm paying attention to the, to the stream. Uh, Mike King. Uh, so, with that said, I'm actually going to introduce Mr. Mike King, Chief of Police of uh, uh, Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Uh, yep. You get the hot seat. Uh -huh. And I apologize. I was checking our stream to make sure it's working. I'm doing the net, network guy thing. <laughs> so, everybody knows this uh, young man here with us now, Mike. Not everybody. Not everybody. No. Everybody, everybody. Who are you? Everybody. <laughs> who, who, are, who are you? What are you doing in this? Oh, oh stranger danger. <laughs> everybody watching this knows who this guy is. Oh. But, um, <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> this is uh, the chief of police of Shepherdstown, uh, West Virginia, Mike King, and most notable on the show, Ghosts of Shepherdstown. Uh, they had two wonderful seasons of the show. So, thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you for coming. Well, thank you. It was a long drive. It was. It feels good to be close at home for usually any event or any investigation. You know, we're traveling two, three, four hours, so it feels good to be in our own neck of the woods. But um, let's jump right into it, man. One of my favorite shows. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I love all the paranormal shows. And what I like about the paranormal shows is each one has their own flavor to it, you know, and like we were discussing off camera, not because Mike's sitting here, one of my all time favorite was Ghosts of Shepherdstown. And the reason being is I, I, I just I like that whole uh, allure about it, you know, um, the spookiness of the town and for everyone that's been there, you'll, you'll, you'll know what I mean. Um, one of the biggest draws for me was in the middle of the night when Nick or Elizabeth or Bill's phone would ring 
and hey, you got to get over here. You know, things are starting to happen. It's jumping off. And just that whole, you know, creepiness of the town and, and going out in the middle of the night. And especially my favorite, I mean, all the places we investigate, I always show favoritism to the, the residential cases, of course. But real quick, Mike, um, when you started getting the calls, you know, from the different residents or business owners or what have you in Shepherdstown, mm -hmm. and the decision was made to contact a professional team to come in and assist the police department. What was your first thought when you contacted Nick and Elizabeth and Bill? Um, really, it was kind of, I, I didn't, I didn't know much about paranormal. Um, had never been involved in anything to do with paranormal. So, like everybody else, I kind of watch TV. So right, right. I knew, I mean, I watch TV, so I knew where to start. Right, right. <laughs> and that's kind of kind of where it all happened. And uh, I got a hold of Nick, and Nick kind of put everybody else together. Right, right. What, um, once the team, you know, was assembled and came in and, you know, you got to meet them and everything, mm -hmm. once the investigation of basically the entire town, you know, came into to full swing, um, what was your thoughts on the whole project so to speak when's it gonna end <laughs> <laughs> um uh, honestly uh it, it's it's still kind of it's still kind of uh strange i think right is probably the the right words to use mm -hmm. um people still come up to you uh they want to talk to you in person um but they don't want anybody else around and they want to they want to say this is what i saw right uh, right you know they whisper to you but I had really, I've been a police officer for a long time. I've never dealt with anything right. um, in regards to paranormal. Right. So it was all something new. Right. Uh, I didn't really know where to start. That's the problem with something like this is, in, in my line of work, yeah. unless you're involved in the paranormal, you don't right. know where to start with it. You don't know what's really happening and what's, what, am I seeing this? Is it really true? Am I hearing it? Are they telling me the truth? You know, right. I mean, it's, it's now, confusing. Before, you know, the whole, because I have to be honest with you, um, before the whole Ghosts of Shepherdstown came to be, mm -hmm. as much time as I've spent in Charlestown and Harper's Ferry and this and that, I, I never even knew of Shepherdstown, mm -hmm. you know, and like everyone else, when I seen the advertisement for it, you know, I was on my phone Googling, like, how far is Shepherdstown from where I live, <laughs> you know. But before the whole Shepherdstown project came to be, were you getting a lot of police calls as far mm -hmm. as things that were coming up unfounded that you couldn't figure out that, I, I guess basically what I'm saying, what led you to think, hey, wait a minute, maybe this is of a, a, a different realm here well, well, than Ernie, the ordinary... I Call. I can tell you, you're as a police officer, and Dave, as his law enforcement experience, um, you you all are involved in paranormal, so it's probably not as difficult for you. But when you get those calls that you can't explain, um, for instance, something as simple as an alarm at a yeah, business, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, and that alarm goes off, and you have two or three sensors tripped, right? Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So you're expecting to find something in there, an animal, a bird. Um, a bat. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of bats, uh, but when you don't find anything, right, and those same alarms keep getting tripped, yeah, night after night, or every three nights, every four nights, you know, it starts to become a problem. Or when you get the calls of uh, a person saying, "I'm in my house. There's somebody in my house. Somebody has broken into my house. I can see the lights turn on mm -hmm. out in the living room. Mm -hmm. I can see people walking by my door. Right. I can hear the footsteps." Right. Right. Yeah. The police get there and the place is locked up. And How see, that, that ties into, like Dave and I, one of the seminars we do, um, <clears throat> and we, you know, really dive into the skeptical end of the paranormal. I think, um, you know, now th this is just everything we discuss is basically our opinions, but, mm -hmm. you know, I think skeptics somewhere along the line experience something paranormal okay but being a skeptic their mind isn't trained to pick up on it mm -hmm. as something paranormal like for example and the three of us can contest to this um 
you know, when when we go somewhere in public with our family or, or what have you, and we're on our own time, yeah. you know, if we go into a restaurant without even thinking about it, without even planning it, I'm always, you know, back against the wall watching the door. Mm -hmm. And it's not that, you know, I want to get involved in anything or I'm anticipating that something's going to happen. But it's just that mindset that you're in and you know what to look for. It's the way you conduct business. Exactly. And I think being a longtime paranormal researcher and investigator, your mind is trained a certain way. And we see things differently than your normal person, so to speak. Um, so being, you know, someone that's skeptic of this whole field, they're, they're going to look at it differently. They're going to come up with a quicker, more rational explanation than, you know, when we hear something or see something or whatever the case may be. Absolutely. You know well, it's I mean? like when you're driving down the road. You're focused on driving down the road, what's in front of you. You don't see what's beside you right. when you're going by, and you're missing everything. Right. If you stop and look around, you're going to see a whole bunch of other things. Same yeah. thing in the paranormal field. Right. Hey, look, my first night with Nick, I'm in a car in the cruiser, mm -hmm. and I'm riding around. And Nick says, well, Mike, he says, tell me about a paranormal experience. I said, I, I don't think I've ever had any. Right, right. And he kind of snickered, and he says, what do you mean? Right, And I right. said, well, I, I don't think I've ever... And he says, well, is there anything you can't explain that's happened to you? And there was something that happened to me when I worked at another department. I was in K-9, mm -hmm. um, and I was searching a building. Right. It was a large building, uh, three stories. And when I went in and gave my K-9 warning, I could hear, clearly hear, two sets of footsteps on the second floor right. running from my right to my left. Right. And the funny part was is that the dog raised his head, and he followed the sound yeah. going across the floor. You know? Oh, and, wow. And Nick says, and what do you think that was? Right. I said, well, I, I turned the dog loose, and he went upstairs, and there was nobody there. I mean, and there's nowhere yeah. anybody can right. get out. He said, okay, so what was that? I said, well, I guess I was hearing things. Right. See, and, and that's exactly, that's exactly, I'm, I'm glad you brought that point up, because that's exactly what I'm, I'm talking about. You know, if you was to call me and say, hey, Ernie, guess what just happened? Yeah. You know, my first thing's like, all right, man, I'm, I'm grabbing my yeah. stuff. I'm on my <laughs> way. Exactly. Dave, get out of bed. It's time to go. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I, I think people that are skeptic, and I, I and you got to be skeptic, you know, because like I, like I say, I'm not one of those that go into a building or a house or whatever on an investigation and, you know, I immediately feel the spirits attaching to me and all that. I have to, I got to say, look, man. Here's some evidence. I can't figure this out. I don't feel things. You know what I mean? And you guys know me. You you have shown me pictures of stuff you guys have gotten. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can look at the same picture and you can say, see the outline? And I can say, no. truly, I can say, no, I don't see that. <laughs> right, right. You know? I, I don't see some of the things that... Right. And I'm told there's this big brick wall in front of me. Right. Yeah. And, and, it, and it happens because, you know, the, a skeptic is always going to come up with a, I or, can find or a reason what, exactly happened. exactly yes. but once you start and this is for everybody once you start investigating and you know you get really deep into it and you you'll start to see things in a different in a different way yep. you know when Absolutely. the you know you have the temperature changes or you know things that show up in the video that sometimes you're left scratching your head you know I, I think the best one that I love is we were at uh, Haldeman Mansion, and I was leading a group, and I went upstairs, and this guy in our group was a professed skeptic. And what I said to him as a paranormal investigator, I'm not here to show you a ghost. I'm here to show you something you can't explain. So I'm wandering through the house with this guy, and of course, he's, per he's I'm a skeptic. I'm all, this is all BS. I'm only here because of my wife. <laughs> and he's holding this Coleman lantern that turns on on the top. And so he goes to the window over here, sets Coleman lantern down, turns it off. I put my equipment in the right, and I start talking and calling out to the spirit that I know that's there to see what will happen. And after a couple seconds, I kind of called him out. I said, by the way, this guy doesn't believe you're here. Can you do something with one of my lights over here to show him you're here? And his light turned on. Hmm. And he looked at me, and I swear, I thought he was going to just bust right there. Mm -hmm. After a couple seconds of like astonishment, he picks up his light. Walks out of the room, walks out of the house, wouldn't come back in. Hmm. I got to tell you, I don't think I'd have stuck around until much <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. But. So I guess um, 
Because the next question I was going to ask you was, and I, I think you already answered it, but if you want to elaborate, um, Ghost of Shepherdstown, mm -hmm. that was your basically your introduction into the paranormal, so to speak? It is. Yes, definitely. What, you know, now through two seasons of it, um, now, after like the completion of, of season one, mm -hmm. As far as being a skeptic, did you believe anything at all at this point, or were you still like, eh, you know, it's another TV show? You know what I mean? And, and look, the TV kind of came with Nick. That wasn't right, right. You know, yeah. that wasn't anything that I had anything to do with. Lord knows, I don't know anybody in that those places <laughs> to get that done. Um, but I never went on any of their investigations. Mm -hmm. So when they come back and they tell me this is what we found, this, this, and this, mm -hmm. you know. Believe it or not, they're the same things that I'm seeing from everybody else that, yeah, well, I wasn't there. I didn't see it, mm -hmm. you know, so it's kind of hard for me to, to grasp, right, I guess. Right. Not not really, I, I want to believe mm -hmm. some of this stuff, but I need some, I need, I need that hard evidence. Right. EVPs, they had EVPs like crazy, voice boxes, you know, that they were using. And tell me what that is. What, EVP? I mean, I know what an EVP oh. <laughs> is, but I mean, tell me what that is right, on that, that yeah. on that machine. I mean, yeah, how did yeah. that get there? Right, right. Now, what I mean, because you go on a lot of investigations with us over yeah. the past few years, and and uh, you know, after the conclusion of uh, season two, but what is it? Anything in spe uh, excuse me, anything in particular or or specific? that's changed your whole mind on the paranormal field? I mean, being a skeptic, but... Because I know some things have happened and yeah. to you, and you've viewed some things that you can't explain, but what changed your mind on the whole paranormal field? Uh, probably my son. Hmm. Um, he is big into it. He, uh -huh. he went, as you well know, his right. very first time with you guys. Right, right. And a lot of things happened, and, um, you know, I... I believe in him, obviously. Right, yeah. And yeah. the things that he's telling me, I mean, what he's feeling, you know. Obviously, we've got EVPs. I'm there when they're captured. Right. I mean, I'm there when the machine is blank and you put it out there. Yeah. Now, my neighbor fella tells me that NSA is having a great time with us <laughs> on those EVPs. You know, they're getting their kicks off. But, right. uh, well, see, one of the, the, the tricks I do, I, I've noticed, I mean, we have all the high dollar voice recorders and all mm -hmm. that and, and they work great i mean we we you know we have a variety of different ones we use based on where we're at however um you know i've ran a couple uh tests throughout the years and i find that the voice recorders on the cell phones mm -hmm. are very sensitive and work just as good if not better than you know the one the uh, voice recorders that you buy. Right. So basically, what I did was when I switched phones, my original uh, smartphone has absolutely no internet service, has no phone service, you know, no GPS, nothing like that. And that's what I use, like for my EVPs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I know that there's nothing contaminating or. Right. You know what I mean? And right. I, I tell you what, some of the best EVPs I've captured over the years has been on that dead phone, so to speak. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, how about the voice we heard on the parabolic dish? Um, that one time, you almost jumped out of your skin. I didn't believe you. And I put it on listen. Yeah. We, we He stuck a parabolic dish up a set of steps. And, um, and he heard a hello. And I'm standing there staring at him. And he's like, Dave, was that you? And I'm like, was what me? <laughs> and he goes, I said, you know, say hello, and I'm like, give me them. I said, you just said hello to Ernie. Can you say hello to me? And clear as day, you hear hello. I'm yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. You know, I think we were together at at Haldeman mm -hmm. one time in the uh, in the summer kitchen, and we had had a group there. I was with a group that you were doing a, a public investigation mm -hmm. on, and we mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. snuck upstairs for a couple minutes. Right, right, right. If right, you remember, right, we had right. had some things happen yeah, up there that yeah. were raising some concern yeah. while we were there, and I think it was. Uh, you, what would you have the SB11 I think it was or a 7 whatever yeah, the yeah the one of the one of those things and you say can you tell me who's here and clear as day my first name and last name no break came right. out remember because yeah. you looked at me and I looked at you and yeah yeah I still wonder how you did that yeah 
Yeah. How'd you guys do that? That's not us, brother. <laughs> no. Um, I, I, seriously, that was kind of strange. And that one, there's a lot of things that bug me, and that's something I can't explain because I knew where you well, guys were, and I knew you wouldn't do that to see, me. See, and the, and the thing is, um, like, if you remember, we uh, you went on an investigation with us, and at the last moment, you contacted me and said you were bringing your wife. Yes. Okay, now, it was totally out of the blue. And during this investigation, based on where we were at, we thought we were going to get responses to coincide with where we're at. Right. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, the investigation took a turn. Basically, I don't want to say an attack, but... A, a, pointed personal questions. Toward, pointed yeah, personal you know, responses. Towards your wife. Yes. Yep. And, you know, she kind of like freaked a little bit because mm -hmm. it was things that... I would never have known. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said some of the things you didn't know. Some of the things know. I didn't know. Right. And so she, we took her out of the uh, location, and I, I sat down and was talking to her. And, and she was clearly. She, yeah, she up. gave me the whole yeah. story and well, just she, every. She, you can tell she was like really freaked out about it, though. But mm -hmm. see, and this past year when we filmed um, World's Largest Ghost Hunt, we were at a farmhouse in Gettysburg, or right on the outskirts of Gettysburg. Now, what we did was we opened the investigate. We were uh, trying to help that little boy that we met at the bash last year, right. Connor. And we were raising money for his medication. He was suffering from cancer. And so what we did was uh, Pam and Steve from the Ghost Exchange, they came up with the idea of, hey, let's open this up to the public, take a donation, and everything goes to aid Connor. Right. So, you know, I have a group, and I'm out in the middle of this field. Now, being in Gettysburg, you think it's going to say, you know, soldiers or Confederate or Union <coughs> or whatever, Civil war. war. Yeah. Yep. Well, we were running one of the devices. I don't remember if it was an Echo Vox or a, um, SB7, but it started getting personal toward me. Mm -hmm. And I was asking questions personal questions and it was just firing off names and places and I was like wow you know and someone asked me like hey we're in Gettysburg why is this happening mm -hmm. you know we, we we thought this would have to do with the Civil War um, but the best explanation I can come up with is you know maybe someone on the other side has a mess not just for me but if this happens to anyone you know, someone on the other side may have a message for you, and say you're a skeptic. You're going to. I'm going to ask you the skeptic you're question gonna, here. You're going to miss that question. You know, you're mm -hmm. going to miss that sign. So if you go to a location and you're there for that specific reason to make contact with someone on the other side, you're in what I like to call the zone. Right. That's why you're there. You know, you're making yourself vulnerable. So if they have an important message that they want to get across to you, what better time to do it than when you're in the zone? That's why these investigations turn personal. So let me ask you the skeptic question. Oh, boy. Here we now, go. Wait, wait. Before you do that, I actually have a comment from Andrew Darling. Cops are always going to be skeptical. We are always looking for the logical explanations. Something just can't be explained. Exactly. It's got to be black or white. You can't, right. you can't mm -hmm. straddle the middle there. It either right. did or it didn't happen. Right. One of right. the two. Now, thanks, Andrew. The best I, you know, the best I can answer on that is, you know, with any investigation, when we get there, we get readings of the whole place mm -hmm. before we even start, so we know exactly what we're dealing with as far as EMFs and loose doors and creaky windows, like and, the light bulb field we found yeah, you know, when we yeah, went through that yeah. one private. Now, you know, when you come up with potential evidence, you have to rule everything mm -hmm. out. I mean, you have to go through it with a fine-tooth comb. You have to try to recreate it. You might have to take 50 more pictures. No different than our job. Right, exactly. And then, you know, think about it like this, Mike. You know, you come up with this, whatever the piece of evidence may mm -hmm. be, whether it's audio or, or visual or personal experience. You ruled everything out, okay? You tried to recreate everything you can possibly recreate, and you're still left with that piece of evidence. What is that piece of evidence? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I want to ask you the skeptic question. Okay, we might have to take a break on this. The Gettysburg <laughs> one. Okay, so 
you were asked personal questions. Right. Information that obviously somebody knew to ask you those questions. Right. Or not, at, but the questions you were asking to give the responses that you got. Right. Correct? Right. Okay, so ha, if it is for that information to have, somebody had to know you and know exactly. that information. Exactly, exactly. Okay? So why is it that the voices are unrecognizable in most cases. I mean, there's very seldom that you catch an EVP or something mm -hmm. where somebody says, I recognize that voice, or they claim to recognize right. that voice. Do you, you understand what I, I'm, yeah, yeah. What I'm if, getting at? If, yeah, if, if, you know, say, uh, you know, Grandmom Judy is haunting right. your house, right. and you get this EVP or something through one of the devices, but and it's it doesn't information sound like... she would know. That, but it doesn't sound like her. Yes. My opinion on that, that, that could be a, a variety of things. Um, like any other evidence, you're going to have to let a strange ear listen to it. Because just like, you know, when you take a picture of, just say, a cloud. Mm -hmm. You know, say, Ernie, what do you see in that cloud? Oh, I see a dog. Right. You know, Dave might say, well, no, nah, that looks like a, a motorcycle to me. You know what I mean? Everybody, it's what we call matrixing. Your mind... When you're faced with something you can't figure out, your mind wants to put it in perspective and come up with a logical explanation. And you can do that even with hearing things. You know what I mean? So could the voice sound like someone in your family? It, it could, but then again, it doesn't. Now, I have to blame a lot of that on the equipment that paranormal investigators in general use. You know what I mean? Because, for example, when we're using an SB7 or an SB11, I mean, it's scanning those radio frequencies so so quickly, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And what you're looking for is the voice that's going to cover all those skips, okay? And based on the energy that the spirit has, you know what I mean? Like sometimes, you know, you'll hear somebody say, well, it kind of sounds like Uncle Bill, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, because it might be coming across slower. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Or based there's on... Time, there's, there could be a time lapse. In yeah, there. exactly. Like, And one of the things I always say, you know how, what's the number one rule, everybody, when you're doing EVPs? You wait, what, 20, 30 seconds. You know what I mean? That's basically the golden rule to give that spirit enough time or energy to answer you. You know, and my big question is, since we're in a different time realm, maybe it's taking... Our question, 20 or 30 seconds, to get to them. Brandon Why? Johnson brought up a good point. Uh, look at it, uh, a haunted location as a crime scene and try to find the answers coming across. Exactly, exactly. Thank you, Brandon. What is up, Brandon Johnson? How you doing, buddy? For those of you, that's Brandon Johnson from Twisted Paranormal. And I need to get some more Facebook stuff from you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be calling you as soon as we're done here, Brandon. We, we do have a question from Terry Thomas. Uh, being a police officer, do you run into many unexplained things like car accidents that you can't explain? Well, I usually can come up with how they happened, but people will tell me that they don't know how the accident happened i looked and there was nobody coming right yeah. they pulled out and all of a sudden we have yeah. a collision it's easy to figure out how the collision occurred right and that's basically what my job is i mean i've had a lot of accident occurred. over the years you know i'm getting ready to start my 23rd year i think next month and uh you know i've had a lot of calls that left me scratching my head sure you know and but none of them's involved i don't think none of them's involved car accidents that I can... No, accidents are pretty cut and dry, yeah. I think. Yeah, um, It's things that happen inside. People go away. Yeah. Um, you know, supposedly there's a break-in because everything is turned upside down. Yeah. Finding a point of entry sometimes is a problem. Yeah. But see, I have but, a... But um, we always blame it then on, what do we do? Well, right. somebody had a key. Yeah. You yeah. Know, somebody yeah. get in because here and you gotta... This. And see, right. this, this is just it. I had a, 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 for instance, and it's basically sounds just like the one you told need you to hold that thought for two seconds All right. um we need to take a quick break uh you want to talk something about before break yeah real quick i want to and everybody join in with me for this it's watching i want to wish a special happy birthday to a friend of mine um if everybody could wish angelina hinkle can you spam it in the channel please just spam the heck out of her 
<laughs> Wish Angelina a very, very happy 15th birthday. I know I'm a little bit late getting it to you, but happy birthday, and we will see you at the Gettysburg Bash next month. If uh, You better show up. I think you're showing up. I got something for you for your birthday, so you have to show up. So happy birthday, Angelina. Woohoo! To check out more programs like Paranormal Inc., hosted by David Saylor and Ernie Atwell, keep an eye out at WLFE TV Radio Network. Ernie, she, uh, Elaine just said she said thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, back to your thought. I um, apologize. Uh, for those of you that know me personally, I was in K9 for a decade. And me too. Now, now you know why he looks like that. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> but Easy. We K9 guys. And see stick together. Yeah. I had 10 years too. They're, yeah. they're going to be a little rough on me. Rough, rough. <laughs> but um, He's one, got night, a cat. <laughs> one night I was working uh, part time and they had a burglary in progress and they called for a canine. So when I get to the scene, I, you know, while I was en route, you know, I told them to evacuate everyone out of the house and the officers are setting the perimeter. And the objective was when I get there, my partner and I are going to search the house. So this is like, uh, well, let's see, I, I think it was close to like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. So I arrive on scene and I noticed the family was standing out front talking to some officers. And I went up to, well, I, I thought it was the mom, but it was the daughter. Um, and I said, tell me what you heard. Mm -hmm. And she says uh, something along the lines, well, this time... I didn't hear anything. So that made me think of two things. Number one, you're not the mom. You weren't the one that called. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this time? Yeah. So there was another time. Well, mom's pretty hysterical. So basically what happened was the house had, upstairs they had hardwood floors. And she heard someone walking across the hardwood floor to her and dad's bedroom. Mm -hmm. And no one was there. Well... She checked the kids' rooms. All the kids were in the room. So, anyhow, you know, Mike, w the way we train the, the dogs are, when we give our, our, our canine announcement, and for those that don't know what a canine announcement is, we just uh, identify who we are, uh, that we're going to release the dog, and, you know, if they don't comply, what's going to happen. Now, you know, normally when you cut the dog loose, they're either going to go right or left. They're going to search the area, and then you move to the next area. When I got to the threshold of the front door, my partner could have went right or left, and then there was a set of steps. As soon as I cut him loose, he ran straight up the steps. Yep, so did. I'm thinking, oh boy, this is, yep, you know, he it. hit that I hot scent. This isn't going to take long, yeah. and I'm going to get off on time. Yep. So I hear him back and forth, back and forth, and nothing. So I go upstairs, and, you know, I, I do a secondary search with him, and everything was fine. So we come downstairs and he clears the main living area. I make another announcement, I send him to the basement. So I hear him down there throwing boxes around and having a good old time and searching. Nothing. So I said, all right, I'm gonna let him run around and continue searching and I'm gonna, I always go back to my start point and reevaluate everything and see if I missed anything. Mm -hmm. So my partner's down the basement searching and I'm standing in the dining room like leaning on the table, just looking around and thinking, well, directly above my head, I heard like heel to toe, heel to toe, go right above my head. Now I'm thinking, oh man, either I'm crazy, I, I want to <laughs> hear this, or somebody's up there. Yeah. Well, lo and behold, my dog comes flying out of the basement. He ran by me so hard that when he bumped my leg, he put me into the table and he ran straight yeah. back upstairs again. Yeah. So I'm like, I definitely somebody up there. Yeah. So I call for a unit to come inside, and when we get up there, there is just no one there. Nothing's changed from the time. And we were just before. like what we were saying is, I have to come up with an answer. Mm -hmm. You know, so I go out to the mom, and you know, she explained this isn't the first time they've heard stuff or whatever. So to give her some sort of, because I mean, gotta give I, I know, kind of closure. I know nothing's going to happen. You know what I mean? I, I know they're not in no danger. 
but I got to let them know that, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. So I basically told them that, you know, there's nothing up there, you know, keeping the consideration that you got hardwood floors. Yeah. I said, and, you know, check the attic, which uh, the attic actually, to enter the attic was in one of the child's rooms in the closet. So it had a but crawl space you had to go up through. Everything was so nice and neatly stacked and stored, but it was, yet it was items that the slightest little touch would have fell. Yeah. So I knew nothing went up there. So I, I basically told them, you know, when morning comes and it's light, you know, just check for critters or rodents mm-hmm. or, you know, things like that. I, I never got called back there, but, you know what I mean? You know, it's funny that you say that because it was like after the first or second episode of the first season of Ghosts of Shepherdstown, I got a phone call from a retired, now forgive me if I get this wrong, but I think it was a sheriff's department guy in the state of Washington or Oregon. Mm-hmm. And he called this believe it or not he called the department and said he just wanted to thank me because of all the creative writing he's had to do in his career to cover up things and that's just what you were saying though yeah i mean you go down and you have to tell these people something what yeah. were they hearing what were you hearing right. you know now elaine wants to know you're going to do that on paranormal 911 we you're willing to tell that story uh <laughs> negative <laughs> So now I've got to ask, Mike, with everything that's happened in Shepherdstown, I know they've kind of closed out the season. A lot of fans are asking it's coming back. Um, Is it kind of settled down or is it like still psychotically active or is it mellowed out? What's going on down there? I don't think it'll ever settle down um, because I still get people that come up to me and tell me about everything that's going on in the town. But what we were having before is not happening anymore. Hey, can I, let me interrupt for one second. Things are died down. If... And everybody watching that's been to Shepherd's Town can vouch for me. If the pizza parlor oh, ever contacts God you. God bless. Tommy, have... Tommy's, we are willing to do an investigation. No charge, just one pie. If they ever experience any kind of problems or whatever, just tell them, leave, <laughs> it, leave the know. oven on and the freezer unlocked. And we'll just come the guys down in the middle of the night. just the guys yeah. for it. Because right? yeah. I tell you what, man, and it's a free plug. but that Yeah, is, free plug to Tommy's. That pizza is so good. Uh, it, it Good was like... 20 miles down the road that way. I mean, this... When he brought that... When Dave and I, we were going to um, Mike's house for the season two of Shepherdstown premiere party. So we stopped to eat and... Um, the pie we, is like that big. I tell you what, like I didn't even know if he put cheese on it because I couldn't see through all the pepperonis. Yeah. I mean, it, it was yeah. just... It was amazing. I, I took a ride just down there just to visit Mike and I'm like, okay, Mike, now that I'm here with you... We're going to Tommy's. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If you're in it's Shepherdstown, all of Georgia's food is good. Yeah, yeah if you uh, you're in Shepherdstown, definitely. Tell, go tell there, me man. he's got a free plug here. Anytime. <laughs> anyway, back to back, back to the business. Yeah, so it's, things are, are are have died down. Okay. Um, to what you know what I mean? We're not having the same type of of things. I think you're always going to have um, from what the investigators who show up there tell me there are certain areas they know to go to that they're going to be able to interact mm-hmm. with. Right. Um, right. Cause I've been there a couple of times and you've pointed me to a couple of graveyards that are like yes. really cool. Yes. Um, there was that one that was for the help that you pointed me at. Yes. Uh, my equipment just kept going nuts in there. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I still feel, but I, I, you get the everyday day in and day out. So, you know, you, you th- have a sense of that evilness presence is gone. Um, yeah, I, I, we're not, a lot of things have changed since the end of season two. Okay. Um, the one main location at the end of season two is no longer what it used to be. Mm-hmm. The people that were there are gone. There were some things going on that were found out later. Dana had talked to me about it later. Um, and she felt that that was probably some reasoning that that happened. And it's probably something we, I can't go into in depth here. Right. right. Um, but um, yeah, there were some things that happened there. She thought that was the reasoning for everything. Okay. Um, Jeffrey Leeper, I, I think it sticks in the back of my mind because it was about six months after yeah. he had been gone. I had to call him. I actually got a call from somebody outside the area wanted to talk to him about a situation they had. And when I called him, the first thing out of his mouth is, things still quiet there? Yeah. Jeff, hey, Jeff, what's up, Jeff? Jeff Leeper's a uh, heck of a guy. We were, uh, when we were at... Um, what was it? Spirits Through Time Paracon, mm-hmm. hosted by the Ghost Pit. Uh, Jeff was there with us. He's a real good guy. Yeah. But um, like he said, he said I can. He said I. He put it to rest. He can't guarantee how long I'll be there. Yeah. Fortunately, fingers crossed, 
it's it's good right now. Well, I'll tell you what, when the the whole project with Shepherdstown kicked off, I mean, you know, between Nick and Elizabeth and Bill, you couldn't have had a better crew. No. I mean, they just... No. You Made know, some good friends out of that, man. Yeah, I mean, just fantastic. they're... Like, everyone... You know, like I, I said earlier in the in the show here, you know, I, I love all the paranormal shows, and everyone has their own flavor, you know, and everyone has their own style of investigating and how they go about it. And I mean, because <laughs> think about it, with all the mainstream, you know, paranormal now, you know, all the different shows on. Imagine if yeah. everyone was exactly the same, or everyone's right. investigating was exactly the same. There, there's, you know, it, it would just be boring. Yeah. You know, and, you know, when Nick and Elizabeth and Bill come in, just the way they approached it and just mm-hmm. took care of it. I mean, it, it was it was, it was awesome. They take care of it as fast as I'd like them to. <laughs> now, <laughs> I, I, my fa- my be- best out of every episode, every episode. I know exactly on. what you're... Let okay. me say what it is and then you elaborate on it. Okay. When the plug came out of you're the wall. Right on the money. <laughs> uh, the expression of Nick, because you could tell it was not staged, it was not... The camera guy was just talking to him and you see it behind him just... Pull, pull out and it yeah. kind of turned around like what was that and you hear the cameraman going that network cable just yanked out of the wall yeah. and they re-ran it and then he was like his first instinct was did you capture that <laughs> <laughs> and you could tell there was like a little hint of what just happened well some <laughs> things i mean and it's it's just the the craziest things catch like catch like you know people that don't understand what we do or why we do it or whatever you know, and they like, hey, let me ask you a question. And their first question is, mm-hmm. aren't you scared? You know, you're going into this, you know, abandoned, insane asylum. Aren't you scared? And it it, it all depends how you look at it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going in from a scientific standpoint, no, it, it's not. I mean, don't get me wrong. The spookiness and the whole allure, I, I love it, yeah. man. That's what keeps us coming back. Oh, yeah. But from a professional level, you know, you're going in to find answers. Yes. and. You know, sometimes things happen like uh, way back in the day when I was with my original team before we started the Paranormal Inc. Solo Project, we were investigating a farmhouse. It was here in Maryland, and it had absolutely no electricity, which works for us. You know what I mean? Because yeah, we know. EMS, it, so. Yeah, right. So anyhow, we had a reporter with us. And we were in this old abandoned, uh, it wasn't abandoned, it was willed to someone. But we were in this house, and this reporter was with me, and we were in the living room. And she was by the, the steps, and I was across the, the living room there. And she told me something, I, I think she said she's got a cold spot, like on her shoulder. So I took my little digital camera, and beep, beep, you know, I took a picture. Well, I noticed a dark mass covering her shoulder right where she said she felt the, the cold. So I didn't want to alarm her because she was a little jumpy at the time. So I just walked over nice and slow to where she was at to see what I, <laughs> to see what I could feel. So I turned around and I was facing the living room. Now I'm holding my digital camera like this, not looking in the viewfinder. I'm just holding it. So I'm talking to her and I said, hey, I'm going to snap a picture. So I hit the, the button, and it goes beep, beep, and it flashed. Well, when the flash lit up, it illuminated the living room. There was a man standing there looking at us. Oh, wow. Now, I don't want to say scared, because, I, I mean, I knew it was not going to hurt me, but startled. How'd you know, how'd you know that? Uh, Got to have faith. <laughs> okay. But, you know, like when you, you know when you come around the corner and something jumps out on you? It's just that yeah. startled feeling. Yeah. And we had uh, the base set up outside in the garage. And my teammates watching could tell just something wasn't right with me. And they radioed in to have me step out. But, you know, in doing this, uh, the point I was trying to make, sometimes you just get that one moment where something startles the heck out of mm-hmm. you. And But the funny thing is, though, and it, it's ironic, we were joking earlier and I was make because I love taking pictures, man. I, I like old school uh, investigating. You know what I mean? And I was taking a lot of pictures. And I made the comment, man, what would happen if I took a picture and in the viewfinder I saw a face? You know what I mean? And we were just laughing and joking. And come to find out it actually happened that night. Well, Pam, Pam did that with me when we were at a, the Haunted Trails. Pam and I were downstairs in uh, Terry's basement. 
and I'm sitting next to his heater, and it's, we're just talking, and I keep feeling it. She took a picture, and she screamed that there's somebody right behind you. And at the same time, I felt somebody touching me. I almost ran her over trying to move. <laughs> and you know about me running people over. Yeah. So, but, but, a whole other story. But, you know, now, in the law enforcement line of work, right? okay, if I see something like that, if I could see it with the naked eye, because obviously I'm not going to be standing at a call taking right, pictures right, right, like right, that yeah. where I see something. Right. Okay, but if you could see something with the naked eye or you hear something, you're probably going to discount it. Exactly. You know, because you, you're not, you're trained to deal with what you can put your hands on, right. what you can grab, right. you know, it's tangible. Like sound, well, let me, yes. let, me, let me ask you, Mike. You, earlier in the, the broadcast, we were talking about, I mean, I understand you're still a skeptic. Okay, but you've stepped over that line a little bit now where you're starting to see things a little different. You know what I mean? From a skeptic standpoint, you, you've come across some things that you can't explain. Very interesting. Right. Yes. Now, but what is there anything in particular that happened to make you say, wow, there might some, be some validity in this after all? The is EVPs. It, Oh, okay. I mean, EVPs are just something because I, I know there's nothing on there when you right. set it down. I've been with you. Right, right. When you turn on and play it back, yeah. I mean, and there. for the skeptics that's watching, you know, we're talking about a simple voice. See, the thing is, I like to use equipment. Let, let's explain an EVP first for those who don't know. EVP, nice and simple in layman's terms, is a voice recorder. Mm -hmm. You ask questions, mm -hmm. and you get a response by someone that's not there. And yeah. the thing is, usually you can't hear it on your ears. Yeah. So I might go, is there somebody here with me? And you'll hear blank. Yes. But then when you play it back, you'll hear, is there somebody here with me? Ernie. What the? You know, yes. So those are, yeah. that's an EVP in a nutshell. And see, that's why, you know, a lot of time, you know, when we're investigating, you know, someone calls to a residence business or what have you, you know, when we're doing EVPs, it, it'll be no more than two or three of us there. You know what I mean? That way we can... Account for every noise. Every little thing, yeah, yeah. But what I was going to say is I like, uh, I mean, everybody has their own investigative style. And, you know, with the way the paranormals become so mainstream, you know, there's all these gadgets and gadgets, which are great. Mm -hmm. But me personally, I like using things that have a primary function other than to find a ghost. Mm -hmm. right. K2 meters. You I know what I mean? Them. A K2 meter, a... Uh, Thermal imaging, mm -hmm. a voice recorder. You know what I mean. We have um, a video up on our YouTube channel. That, um, you can check it from our Paranormal Link site. Um, Dreama, his wife, actually was using my K2 up in um, um, an attic, and it, it was just pegged out. There's no electricity up there, and then we started getting a direct response with yes questions from a REM pod. Really bizarre. 17 minutes. The temperature went from 53 down to 31. You could see your breath. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really wild video. Take a look at that when you get a minute. Yeah, that was that was kind of strange. <coughs> I, I admit that one. That was kind of strange. Okay. That one was really funny. For so, me, that one was really funny. So I got to tell you this story on this one. Everybody was in the group up there. And when I say up there, we're in the attic, and they're sitting away from me. I'm just sitting back on a chair. This was, was the there. same. At the night. same yeah, location, yeah. same night. I'm just sitting on the chair. And I hear, and I really think it was my wife who said, oh, I can feel it getting colder in here. And I thought to myself, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> you know? Dream on. <laughs> yeah, I, I really <laughs> did. I thought, oh, God, here we go. Now she's into this, buying oh, into this man. stuff. You know? And somebody there had a thermometer, and they shot the temperature. Right. Before we started, and I know what they said, and then they shot the temperature again, and it was like, 14 degrees difference or, mm -hmm. or a little mm -hmm. more than that even yeah. that hit it and you would think gone. with the because we were leading a uh, public investigation with that amount of people in that small area if anything the temperature would arose right you know? yep. yeah. right so for like what 15 20 minutes this like this temperature had been... stayed down mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> and then all of a sudden because i actually did feel back where i was sitting and i felt mm -hmm. it get cold mm -hmm. there's no two ways about it and then all of a sudden i felt man i'm getting warm again well, and somebody you, shot the temperature. If you remember, because this up. is funny, where Mike was, he couldn't necessarily hear us. Mm -mm. He was at the entrance of the attic. Now, the responses we were getting on the equipment, when it, it stopped, yes. and then a few seconds later, I hear Mike yell, it's gone. <laughs> and we're like, 
What? Yep. Yeah, didn't you feel that temperature <coughs> come back up? And, <laughs> and it went from 31 degrees back to 53 degrees. Yeah. And the place we were in had no heat. Nope. Right. There, there yeah. was no yeah. heat at all. And we were in the attic, and it was November. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah, it was. It was so November. It, it, was, it was not. November. It was not. It wasn't cold. It wasn't hot. It was right. it nice. It was. Yeah. It, it was comfortable. Been, and uh, logistically, it should have been with with what 20 people in the attic. The temperature should have gone up. And all right. Been, I got a. Uh, because Mike's been asking some questions. I got a question for Mike. Uh-oh. Now that uh, Shepherdstown's all wrapped up and yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah. Anything new happening? <laughs> what are you doing? Well. Where have you been? Um, well, I've been around. But uh, <laughs> uh, on the Travel Channel, there's a new show, Ghost of Morgan City. It was uh, filmed in Morgan City, Louisiana. has a really, uh, has a different team in it it was put together by the people down there mm-hmm. um in morgan city mm-hmm. um it, it's a kind of ironic it, it was I, I, i'll tell the story and people are going to go oh bull that's bull but it, it's the truth i got new next door neighbors and the guy uh used to be the chief of police in morgan city oh nice. some years back right. and he he saw the cruiser out in front of my house and he said i've seen the show and he recognized the cruiser uh-huh. so he started talking to me and you know, he says, well, you should go down there. And he starts telling me all the stuff that had happened to him while he had been a police officer down there in Morgan City. And I said, really? All this stuff really happened? He said, yeah. And he's a staunch not non-believer. Mm-hmm. Okay? I mean, he would pull up when he was just running a patrol car before he was the chief of police down there. Uh, they'd go on a call for a dead body, and they would run two-man cars. He said he'd stop the car at an intersection about a block away, and the passenger would get out and say, I'm not going any further. I know that place. I know the things that happened in there. Right. He said, I'm not going down there for that dead body. Yeah. You know, wow. things like this. And he said, well, he'd have to leave him there, and he'd go handle the call. And, right. You know. Right. But when he's telling me this, and, and, and he's truly a skeptic, right. okay, he's the one who says that it's NSA on the EVP. <laughs> so I'll tell you that right now. Um Dream when you hear that, your house is bugged. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he said, here, here's the guy who's chief. Right. Give him a call. He said, I guarantee you he, he'll tell you what's going on. You know the here. best, I watched that episode the other night, the first episode. You I know, haven't. You know what I like. I, I confess, won't give I nothing away for those that didn't see it. But you know my, what I enjoyed the most out of that episode? What's that? That the chief's name is Bo and the mayor's name is Boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I met them both. Met them both. Fantastic, fantastic people. Um, I can't say enough good about them. If you're down there, please stop in and see them. Did they give you a nickname when you were down there? No, they didn't give me a nickname. But uh, Sweetums? <laughs> yeah. But they, they are. They're, they're super yeah. nice Dreama, people. can you um, message in what Mike's nickname is, please? No. Uh, we'll just look down there. Um, I, you can't put them on this show anyhow. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I, I watched that the other night, and I like that, uh, you know, why I, I just like that whole, you know, with Shepherdstown and with Morgan City, mm-hmm. just that whole spookiness of the town. Mm-hmm. And, and see, being, you know, what got me into um, investigating was researching this before, you know, the whole paranormal went mainstream, yeah. you know, I, I always research spirits and ghosts and, you know, in Catholic school, I used to love the stories and religion class and it, I've always been into that. And, you know, with like Shepherdstown, just diving into the history of it and, you know, it just, I, I like the shows where you're not just running around in the dark with flashlights right. listening for, you know. Yeah. You're going, exactly, you're going for exactly. a reason. Exactly. Exactly. To where you're at. Right. And um, you have to look at it too, as an, a paranormal investigator. You know, we get calls. Hey, can you come help me? Mm-hmm. Well, sure. We go help the client, but maybe the spirit needs help. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm no expert on it, but you have to look at it. Is you know they're well, making Lori, contact for Lori a reason. Yeah, how, many, yeah. how many spirits oh, did Lori I help I know. just on the show mm-hmm. alone? Hi, Lori. Hi, Lori. We love you, babe. So, um, yeah, we're gonna have to have miss you, Lori. Here. Yeah, miss you, Nick. Miss yeah. you. We're gonna have to talk, Lori Johnson. Miss you, L. Miss you, Bill. Miss you guys. Stop yep. in and see me. <laughs> I'm sure I can find something for you to do. <laughs> <laughs> so most definitely. But it, it, going back to the to the Morgan City, um, Morgan City is about an hour from. Um, from uh, New Orleans. 
Okay. Um, and I don't think there's any question about New Orleans, yeah. voodoo yeah. And, that, and all yeah. the things that are associated yeah. with yeah. that. That is my first true... Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been in the paranormal field a while, and I've had some really cool stuff happen, but not on a professional level. My first professional actual capture was in New Orleans. And that's how Ernie and I actually... Ernie and I know each other from karate. Um, and I came after going to New Orleans, said, Ernie, check this picture out. And it blew his mind, and then he brought me into the paranormal, um, into a professional team. So, and I've been regretting it ever <laughs> since. I only have one thing to say. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next episode of uh, yeah. Morgan City. See where they go with it. Uh, no spoiler alerts here. I'm tell you that right now. What's you know that? why? There's no spoiler alerts here. You know, know why? Because again, I'm in the dark, <laughs> just like I was in Shepherdstown. I'm left out. Like, I wonder everybody watching. I wonder how many uh, paranormal experiences Mike has had, and just <laughs> just discount it. Just like, like, oh, well, like, heck, you know, <laughs> by, by by accident or by choice, yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. But yeah, you know, Dreama, did you move my keys again? Desmond, did you leave that door open? You know, that does happen, and she blames it on age. Oh, My right. age, right. not hers. And it very good. Well, could be something with all the history in, in Shepherd. Well, we're all in the '50s club, so <laughs> it's, it's yeah, the over the hill guys. You yeah. know, I, I told I told a story, um, and I've told it a lot of times. I understand that about a tombstone that was left at our yeah. Yes, door. Yes, you showed yeah. me that. I you told that. me the very first time I met you when I was at the police station. Um, you told me that, <laughs> yep. and that was something. I still have it, so if any of you can <laughs> dial up where it goes, please let me know, because wow. I'd still like to get rid of it. Hey, um, while we got a minute left or so, I just want to uh, I want to say what's up to Pam and Steve from the Gettysburg, Gettysburg Ghost Exchange. Battlefield Bash. And the Lookout yeah. House. Yeah, July 26, 27, and 28 to benefit the Wounded Warriors of Pennsylvania it is the third annual Gettysburg Battlefield Bash. We will and be there you, all three days. You all better be there because we will all be there. Everybody's going to be there. A lot of other people will be there you'll want to meet. Make sure your phone is fully charged. You're going to want to take a lot of pictures. There's a lot of uh, A-gamers there. Yep. And last year, I mean, we had so much fun. It's only $10 to get in, and it benefits the Wounded Warriors. And if you love the paranormal, you this is a must. This is one of the biggest paranormal events that you'll attend. Most definitely. Well, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the, our first broadcast of Step Into the Paranormal uh, on WLFE DB Radio one. Network. Uh, I'm your host, Dave Seiler. This is your co-host, Ernie Atwell, with our special guest, Chief of Police from the show Ghosts of Shepherdstown, Mike King. Ernie, do you have anything else? Yeah, closing? quick. I just want to give a quick couple shout-outs. Um, Want to say what's up to the Twisted Paranormal Society, uh, Real Life Paranormal out of West Virginia, and I want to give a shout out to a new group that formed, Researchers of the Unknown. Hope you all are doing well, and what's up to Keystone State Paranormal Society, and of course to uh, Pam and Steve of the Gettysburg Ghost Exchange. Love you guys. We will see you at the bash in just a few weeks. We're all looking forward to it. Can't wait. I can't. It came quick, didn't and, it? And thank you, everybody, for for all the comments. I'm trying to keep up with them. I'm going to try to start shouting out along the way, but love you guys, and thank you for the, the positive feedback. We love you. Please share our show along the way, and stay, stay spooky, y'all. Bye.